I'm Steve Thomas. I'm a co-investigator uh, with Dr. Resnick from the University of Nebraska. And so this is the next stop on our river tour. We're now up into a headwater system. Uh, and you can tell there's some differences between here and down by the Kiowa where we just were and down uh, farther below at the Fort Boulder. We've gotten a more closed canopy, narrower stream, with a much more uh, complete canopy covering the stream. Fairly a little amount of open sky patches that allow direct light into the system. And we're here at, at noon today, so today, right now, we're at a particularly bright time. Uh, but commonly, we have light levels here that would be about a fifth to less than a, uh, less than a, uh, about around 10 percent to 20 percent of ambient light. Um, and so, what you might not be able to see, but if we were to cut this course, you'd see that we have very steep hillsides, so a very constrained channel, uh, probably goes up 30, 40 feet in the first, uh, you know, 20 or 30 feet off the, off the stream bank. So, again, very thin channel. We've got uh, a much reduced light level here, much more overhanging vegetation, uh, and potentially very light limiting conditions for the processes that are taking place in the stream. And in systems like this, a lot of what we find in the stream, uh, a lot of the biology, the feeding interactions, are often fueled by leaves that fall in from this surrounding terrestrial environment. So these small streams that have these closed canopies rely heavily on leaf fall, what we call allochthonous energy sources for their food supply, and a very reduced role in the production of algae and the importance of algae in the food. Now we're going to move from here to an upper site where we've seen the canopy and uh, we'll see some of the differences when we pop up there.